was that? It's kind of like a plane crash. It was the reaction on the part of... Uh, Come to us, come to us. Come to us. Come to us. Hey, Beth. Well, what is that? Something, somebody hit uh, the World Trade Center or the... It's a trade center. The World trade, trade center. center. There's a fire on the upper floors. It's just an explosion. Nice car, what is it? Oh, it's my new Kia Optima. I got a Kia September clearance event. Should have got a Toyota Camry. I got leather seats. Me too. V6 engine? With Sportmatic transmission. Five year warranty. Oh, no. Ha! Ten year. And I got 2,000 cash back, which means I paid seven grand less than you. Get amazing deals on 2001 models during Kia September clearance event. Hurry, event ends October 1st. Dual front seat mounted side airbags? Got it! Amazing Blue Star ointment stops itching fast. Athlete's foot, jock itch, psoriasis, ringworm, scalp itch, stops corn and callus growth fast. Winter itch, dry cracked feet. The original. Ask for it. The Malaysian Prime Minister must be eliminated. The world needed a hero, but what if it's not? Crashed? Jim, just a few moments ago, something uh, believed to be a plane crashed into the south tower of the World Trade Center. I just saw flames inside. You can see the smoke. Uh, coming out of the uh, of the tower, we have no idea what it was. It was a tremendous boom just a few moments ago. You can hear around me emergency vehicles heading towards the scene. Now this could have been a uh, an aircraft or it could have been something internal. Uh, it appears to be something coming from the outside uh, due to the uh, nature of the uh, opening uh, on about the hundredth floor of the south tower of the. World Trade Center. Uh, police vehicles and fire vehicles are zipping by me here. Uh, we just have no idea. So to the uh, south of the tower, we see some particles, uh, also some gray smoke. Now the smoke coming out of the opening appears to be uh, black smoke. Uh, this would indicate things are burning inside. Uh, we have no idea of what happened, but we did hear what sounded like, uh, sounded like an aircraft. Uh, and then a tremendous boom. Now, I don't know whether we could confirm that that was an aircraft or not. David, what did you hear? What, did, what, did, what would you say you heard? This is our cameraman, Dave Stalick. Incredible explosion. Very, very loud. Yeah. This just in, you were looking at a, obviously a very disturbing live shot there. That is the World Trade Center, and we have unconfirmed reports this morning that a plane has crashed into one of the towers of the World Trade Center. The CNN Center right now is just beginning to work on this story, obviously calling our sources and trying to figure out exactly what happened, but clearly something relatively devastating happening this morning there on the south end of the island of Manhattan. That is, once again, a picture of one of the towers of the World Trade Center. When you can see these pictures, it's obviously uh, something devastating has happened. And again, unconfirmed report that a plane has crashed into one of the towers there. We are efforting more information on this subject as it becomes available to you. Right now, we've got Sean Murtaugh. He is a CNN producer on the telephone right now. Sean, what can you tell us about what you know? This is uh, Sean Murtaugh. I just was uh, standing on the uh, uh, vice president of finance. Sean, Vice President of Finance for CNN. Sean, we're on the air right now. What, what can you tell us about this situation? Hello? Yes, yeah, Sean, you're on the air yes, right yes. now. Uh, can, what can, go ahead. What can you tell us? I, I just witnessed a plane that appeared to be cruising uh, slightly lower than normal at altitude over New York City, and it appears to have crashed into, uh, I don't know which tower it is, but it hit directly in the middle of uh, one of the World Trade Center towers. Sean, what kind of plane? Was it a small plane, a, a it jet? Was a, uh, it was a jet. It uh, looked like a two-engine jet, um, maybe a 737. You're talking about a large passenger commercial jet. A large jet. passenger commercial jet. He is on East 12th Street. Tony, can you please tell us what yes, you Yes, I can tell you what happened. I was taking the garbage out of the building when we heard this roaring engines coming. We looked up and there was a plane. Next thing you know, we heard boom. We ran up to the corner and hit right into the World Trade Center. Tony, can, center. 
Can you tell us what kind of an airplane is it? It had to be a 737 and had to hit the World Trade Center. It was a big, big plane. Okay, and what do you see at this point? Oh, smoke and screaming and, uh, I mean, screaming engines and all the fire ants and police departments are all, all traveling down that way. Oh, my God almighty, the black smoke all over the place. I hope nobody, there's got to be somebody killed in it and poor people that went to work. Well, Tony, we don't have any confirmation from any... I understand that you are, are over by City Hall, having been right. reporting on the political developments. Now, you are a good, uh, what, eight, nine, ten blocks away from the scene right now? At least, Jim. Uh, we're at Park Row, and of course the uh, World Trade Center is at least uh, six or seven blocks uh, away from us. Uh, I do see more flame now. Okay, you can see, because we cannot see flame, we see lots of black smoke, but we can't see flame. Can All right, here's a, uh, Ali, uh, if you have a monitor there, I don't know whether you do or not, but uh, there is another picture in which we do see flame. Right. And we see a gaping hole in the exterior of the North Tower of the World Trade Center. With exactly. smoke, go ahead. That's the south side of the North Tower of the World Trade Center. Uh, if this indeed was an aircraft, uh, and this has not been confirmed, it was heading south uh, uh, over, uh, over Manhattan. And I did hear some kind of a screech or some kind of a wail uh, before a tremendous boom. Uh, so uh, I, I first thought it was a plane. Uh, then I looked at, the, uh, at what was going on here and saw that perhaps it was internal rather than external but we'll have to wait for official confirmation on that uh, now, emergency vehicles as you know jim are really pouring onto the scene sure we can hear them uh, in the background as as you're reporting to us now once again what time was it uh, if you can recall ali when this took place we were right into the commercial break and it was about uh, a minute and a half before uh, we came on jim so work it out all right, Ali. Now, I, I'm told by the control room that we're, we're obviously trying to talk to people in that neighborhood who have, made, have been a little closer to it uh, than you are, Ali. Do we have any people to talk to? Sure, we've got some people here walking away. Excuse me, sir, did you see what happened? All right, go ahead. Yeah, I saw something, something like bombing. Did you see anything hit the building, or did yeah. it come from the building? That's the bomb, I think so. That was something bomb. hit the building? Yeah. All right, thank you. All right, we got some other people. They're all rushing away from the site. But we don't just, blame them, especially that fellow with his with little girl in his arms. Did you see what happened, sir? Did you see what happened? What happened? Well, I was in the past train, and there was a huge explosion sound. Everyone came out. A large section of the building is blown out around, like, the 80th floor. Did, was it hit by something, or was it something it was inside. inside? It, it was, was inside. inside. Because it looked out. Everything was coming out. Everything all was the coming. windows were coming out, all the papers were What is on out. the sidewalk? I didn't see anything. Were I there ran. any people hurt, do you know? Um, I just ran, and everyone in the past train just ran. I don't know if anyone was hurt, but I assume they were because the windows were all blown out. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Ollie, you would have to assume uh, a very, very terrible situation if that indeed is the case, because I'm sure uh, there were people, there were people up there in that... Uh, there were people up there in that uh, World Trade Center. Now, we have lost, again, our transmitter is on top of the World Trade Center, so we apparently uh, have consequently lost contact with Dick Oliver, but we are on the, on the phone with an eyewitness. Uh, Rosa, can you hear me? Is Rosa there? Hello? Rosa? Yes. Uh, this is Jim Ryan here in the studio. Hi. Uh, what is your last name, please? Cardona Rivera. Oh, Cardona. Rosa Cardona Rivera. Tell us uh, what you saw and heard, if you would, please. Okay. I, um, I'm at 99 Hudson Street. I was standing outside, actually, at the side of the building smoking a cigarette. And I hear a plane, and I don't usually see planes in this area. Then all of a sudden, I sort of go right into the, to, uh, to the World Trade Center. To the, to the building. So right you in. saw a plane crash, crash into the side of the World Trade Center? Yes, sir. And, and, uh, and I'm like on the 14th floor, so I was just like looking out, you know, because there's like a, a fire, some like fire staircase or something, you know, just like a little balcony. And I, I saw it go right into the building, and I was like, oh my God, you know. And I have, and it was a big plane. It wasn't, you know, a little plane. It was fairly big. How big can you tell us? Give us an idea. Oh, I don't know. I would say it's like a plane that I board on to go you know, to, well. It... We are now going to go to Mary Corza on the telephone, who is another eyewitness. Mary, can you tell us what you saw? Mary? 
Mary, are you there? I am here. Mary, can you please tell us where you, what you saw and where you are? I'm at 14th Street and 5th Avenue, and we saw a plane flying low overhead, which caught, caught all of our attention. We looked up. It was making a beeline for the World Trade Center. It was very low, extremely low. Not a big plane like an, air, you know, an airliner, uh, but not a tiny propeller plane either, a small, small jet plane. Uh, we, we can now see flames coming from the building. It appeared to you that the airplane was directly aimed at the World Trade Center? It did appear that way to many of us that were here on the ground, yes. Okay. And when and it hit, there was a, you know, the big boom, a big cloud of smoke, some flames, and then mostly smoke. It just started flaming now. Have you witnessed any people coming out of the building? Have they been able to tell you anything at this point? No, I'm all the way up on 14th Street, so I can't see the building down below. Uh, it was only a, uh, maybe a minute or two before you could hear sirens coming, so they did alert people right away, obviously. But uh, you probably have a better fix on how many floors were damaged. It looks like quite a few floors. Yeah, from what we're looking at, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, I would say 15 to 18 stories, and there is uh, debris falling off that building yeah, as we see, speak. You did see shattered glass raining down after it hit, and, uh, you know, like I said, a big cloud of smoke. Um, but you couldn't tell much more from 14th Street. Now, we had an earlier eyewitness that told us he thought it appeared to be a 737. Your, what you saw was a small, perhaps twin-engine airplane? No, not a twin-engine. It was a jet um, of medium to smallish proportions. Not a big airliner, though. Okay. Um, okay, so it appeared to be a, and, and what, what, pro, you heard this sound, I'm just trying to understand what happened, you heard a sound, that's what compelled you to look up into the sky. Yeah, you could hear, you could hear a jet coming overhead and it sounded low, so many of us looked up to see what was, you know, because it sounded so close, we all looked up, mm -hmm. and like I said, it didn't look like it was swerving or out of control, it was going steadily lower, uh, it was, you know, definitely going steadily lower, but it wasn't dropping, uh, like, nose first or anything that would make you think that the plane was in trouble. Right. Which uh, then, of course, raises the question exactly what was that airplane doing and, and how did this occur? Right, uh, but the airplane, I, the airplane did not appear in, to be in trouble to you. I, I, don't know, I don't know enough about airplanes to know what it should look like, but it wasn't nose down or it wasn't swerving up and down or left and right. It was making a straight, steady decline towards the, air the World Trade Center. Uh, Mary, I'm hearing what, is so what sounds to be an awful lot of people that are either crying or uh, sobbing or something in the background. That, that's my baby wondering why I'm still standing here. But there are a lot of us who are shaking or in, with tears coming down our faces because it's mind-boggling to think about how many people are up there who, you know, aren't anymore. Um, exactly. And uh, Mary, again, thank you. Hey, Steve, hang with us. We're going to go to another eyewitness, Sandra Rodriguez. Sandra, are you there? Sandra, can you hear me? Yes, I can. This is Steve Bartlestein, uh, Eyewitness News. Can you tell us what you saw? Okay, I'm over here in the South Bronx, and I, and I was up on the roof, and I the plane came right over my roof. And really? it was up at a pretty good height, like it was a normal flight. And I like kind of thought to myself, oh, it's probably going to JFK, because we could see them land in uh, LaGuardia. It came over. It's a small. It was a small passenger plane, like about maybe 50 people could fit in it. Okay. A small one, and um, definitely not a Cessna. And uh, it just kept on going. And the first thing I thought of is it's like a drunk driver. It just kept on going and realized what was going on and tried to turn to the left, and wow. it didn't. It didn't make it. It went right into the right into the World Trade Center. Sandra, Olivia talked earlier about it. It was very, very loud as it went over her area. Now, that, that could possibly be reverb in the city. You're used to planes going over your uh, your apartment, I would imagine, in the yes, South I Bronx. Am. Did yes. it sound similar or dissimilar? Um, similar. It sounded normal. Did it? Yeah, it sounded very normal. It sounded at a norm, like a, the normal sound at the height that it was. And uh, it looked like a normal, a normal uh, plane going over the city. And then all of a sudden, it was like um, a sudden try to turn to the left. And it didn't make it. It just went right into the World Trade Center. It's it, interesting. It like, slammed right into it. Did you see it actually make contact with the building? Yes, I did. Now, the fact that you would watch a plane like that, was there something unusual that made you watch the course of a plane? Yeah, because uh, usually uh, planes coming into LaGuardia, they don't they don't fly this court. It was flying uh, from the uh, Westchester direction right. mm -hmm. into Manhattan, that direction. And anything going into LaGuardia, they they usually do like a circle pattern, or okay. you'll see them um, coming in from like uh, around New Jersey or over Manhattan itself. 
you look at it, a new. It didn't look right. Okay, let me put one more. You're looking kind of at one of our newer pictures of the buildings. You can see uh, the the smoke very very dense. This perhaps is the north side. I can't tell from looking. Uh, black smoke. Let's go to. We've got another eyewitness on the on the phone. Uh, is it Winston Campbell? It's Winston, Winston Mitchell. Mitchell. Winston, are you with us? Yes, I am. Winston, you're a, you're a photographer. Yeah, I work for Transit Transit News. Okay, can you tell us what you saw, Winston? Yeah, I'm sitting in the car, and I heard this um, plane overhead, and then all of a sudden I, I thought it sounded kind of loud, um, louder. Then I looked up, and all of a sudden it smashed right dead into the center of the World Trade Center. Um, big, um, big flash of flame. Uh, fire coming out from all over, then the, all the, um, the bricks, is a huge hole right now. Um, it almost looks like the plane probably went through, I'm not sure. Winston, can you see, are you on the north side there where the, the plane made uh, contact? Yes, I am. Now, when you say a huge hole, uh, one of our earlier uh -oh. witnesses, Libby Clark, said not much of the plane came down off the building, much no, of it went, went totally in. into the building. It's in the building that, from what you can see. Right. Now, can yeah. you see if there's a lot of debris downstairs, Winston? Um, no, because it looked like it, it inverted with the impact. Everything went inside the building. Inside. Uh, the only thing that came out was a little bit of the uh, the outside awning. But I'd say the huge, the hole is, let me just get a better look right now. Okay, go ahead. We'll the, um, I'd say the hole takes about... This is our sixth, seventh floor. Oh, my goodness. Oh, God. There's another. There's another. Oh, my goodness. We got an explosion inside. Oh, my goodness. Now, now, now it's people it's running up the street. Okay. There's a second plane okay. just crashed into the world. Okay, just put Winston on pause there for just a moment. The whole building just exploded some more. The whole top part. Okay. The building's still intact. People are running up the streets. Am I still connected? Winston, this would support probably what Libby and you both said that perhaps the fuselage was in the building that would cause a second explosion such as that. Well, that's what just happened then. That would that certainly yeah, it looks up. like um, I, we're getting word that perhaps Okay, hold on. The, the people here are everybody's panicking. All right, with Winston, you know, Winston, let me put Winston on hold for just a moment. Okay, I don't Winston, know how much longer we're staying. I'm inside of a diner right now. Well, Winston, you know what? If you could give us a call back, I just don't want to panic here on the air. Let's just uh, take some of our pictures from News Chopper 7. Now, one of our producers said perhaps a second plane was involved, and let's not, let's not even speculate to that point, but at least put it out there that perhaps that may have happened. Uh, the second explosion would certainly back the theory from a couple of eyewitnesses that the plane fuselage perhaps stayed in those upper buildings. Now, if you look at the second building, there are two that both Twin Towers now are on fire. Now, this was not the case, am I correct? A couple of moments ago. This is the second Twin Tower now on fire. And we're gonna check on the second flight if perhaps that had happened. This all began at about 8.48 this morning. Again, what we know, in case you're just joining us, a small plane, not a Cessna type or five or six seater, but instead perhaps a passenger flight, ran into the north side of the World Trade Center. As you can see, the, the second explosion that you're looking at now in the second Twin Tower it has spread much debris, much more debris than the first explosion or the first accident. Uh, if there is, if, is Winston still on the line with us? Okay, he's not there, but um, do we have, I'll just talk to my producer, do we have a, an eyewitness that perhaps sees better than we do from these pictures? Again, you can see that there is debris falling off. Okay, we actually have an eyewitness news reporter, Dr. Jay Adlersberg, who is downtown at the time, and he is on the phone with us live. Dr. Jay, what can you tell us? Hello, Steve. Um, I'm actually uptown at 86th and Riverside. I can see the World Trade Center from about half the building um, uh, up to the top. And about five minutes ago, as I was watching the smoke, um, a small plane, I it looked like a propeller plane came in from the west and um, uh, about 20 or 25 stories below the top of the center it disappeared for a, a second and then exploded 
um, uh, behind a water tower, so I couldn't tell whether it hit the building or not, but it was very visible that a plane had come in uh, at a low altitude uh, okay. and appeared to crash into the uh, World Trade Center. Dr. J, we're going to take a look at videotape just moments ago of the second plane hitting the World Trade Center. That is spectacular pictures. I don't know if you, you could see the plane, and that too was a passenger plane, if perhaps some type of navigating system or some type of electronics would have put two planes into the World Trade Center within, it looks like about 18 minutes of each other. You wanna to go to, we have another copy. There is the second plane, another passenger plane hitting the World Trade Center. These pictures are frightening indeed. These are just minutes between each other. So naturally, you will guess and you will speculate and perhaps ask the question, if some type of navigating equipment is awry, the two commuter planes would run into the World Trade Centers at the same time. Uh, another witness, Janice Huff on the telephone. I'm not sure if it's our Janice Huff, but uh, she apparently was a witness to, Janice, to, the, to the second you, explosion. You hey, saw this? Where are you? No, no, no. Listen, I'm watching TV right now. Yes. Yeah. And, um, you know, I can see the pictures that we have of the building, the first building, the one with the tower on the top. And as I'm watching it and you're talking, I see a plane flying behind the other tower. And I see it getting closer and closer to the building. And I'm thinking, is that a plane? And it was. And all of a sudden, I see this explosion in the other tower. So there was another plane. So there was another plane with a second I mean, I, explosion. From, from what I am look, looking at on television, from the angle that I was looking. Uh, mm -hmm. Here's a replay right here, I believe. When I was watching uh, this, looking at the first tower, I okay. noticed that there was a small plane oh. coming around the side of the building. You see it there on the right? I see it. I see it. I see it right there. Plane. There it is right there. I is see it. it. And then it goes, boom, right there. Watch. That's there it. it is. You're absolutely right. Oh, my goodness. So I don't know if it's a helicopter or a plane, but it was certainly flying, and it went right into the building. It was a plane. I... Can, can we show that again, please? I... Uh, I, I did. I clearly did not notice that the first time. Right. I think we need to take a look at that again. Um, it's, uh, it, you know, obviously what we are looking at are the twin towers of the World Trade Center in flames. We know nothing yet about the number of people, or the, the, what has exactly happened there. Uh, we we can only tell you what we have witnessed and what eyewitnesses have told us. Now here we're going to look at this tape again. Here it comes. Say that. Uh we have an eyewitness who said it was a large plane that crashed first and then uh -huh. as as we were watching the live picture here in the studio we saw a plane mm -hmm. crash into the crash into the other tower of the world trade center and again let's uh just to be sure th there oh, it is oh. there it is the plane mm. went right through mm. the other tower of the world trade center that is a very hard thing to watch and clearly mm. Clearly, untold carnage must be the result of those uh, suicide terrorist activities. That was a large, a large commercial plane. Was a jet. The, the, the gentleman, the Jim Friedel, the gentleman from Hoboken who was watching, said the first one looked to him like a 727. Like a 727. Well, look at the wingspan, the swath it cut through the towers. Yeah. Yeah, lots of speculation, no doubt. And for years, we have been talking about security from terrorists here in this major city. It makes you wonder how, if it indeed were two planes, we did see one. How did they manage to get into the area and, and to, to you just wonder, hit the these, plane uh, like that? These are all the things the that we're going to have to be that are going to have to be answered. How could uh, how could two uh, mm large planes uh, just that quickly uh, get out of uh, out of uh, control from our local uh, presumably yes. commercial aircraft and now we can't speak to the first one mm -hmm. but that second aircraft that went through looked like a large twin engine or three engine mm -hmm. jet those are simply not around for private aviation yeah, that's not your piper cub no it is not that's obviously mm -hmm designed to do considerable damage uh, to those buildings on this day when we're holding a primary election mm. in New York City. Now, Jim, I would imagine... Jim, what, uh, Ollie? Jim, what you're saying uh, could 
could be a drone aircraft. That's an aircraft that's uh, uh, guided electronically uh, to its target without having a pilot. Now, that is a possibility as well. In the meantime, I can tell you the flames are shooting out of both towers now, uh, the heaviest being on the south tower, the northeast corner of the south tower uh, of the World Trade Center. But there's a considerable blaze going on in the north tower as well. Yeah, I wonder if there's any way of finding out exactly what is located on those upper floors. You'd like to just cross your fingers and pray to God that maybe there weren't in, uh, and a there lot of people up there State at that office time. buildings, yeah. and of course there are lots of commercial uh, office buildings uh, on those spaces as well. I know uh, during the last terrorist attack on the mm -hmm. World Trade Center, uh, my son was in the building, mm -hmm. and uh, he told stories of, of, of groping down through the staircases yes. for some 50 floors mm -hmm. before he, thank God, got out safely. Mm -hmm. In fact, the governor has an office in the uh, World Trade Center as well. Uh, the, the, there is one thing. After the bombing of the World mm -hmm. Trade Center in, in the 90s, I do know that there were major efforts to have disaster drills, to have a mm -hmm. preparedness plan in the event uh, of an awful tragedy mm -hmm. like this, but one has to wonder how with two gigantic skyscrapers mm -hmm. burning, uh, the fire department and emergency services can handle both in that confined space uh, without a tremendous it's, step No matter forward. how much you set in can place, how much you try to prepare for until it... And then you see the explosion. Right there. Unbelievable. Um, let us tell you that all of the airports in, New York, in the New York City metropolitan area are closed down right now. Subway lines 1, 2, 3, and 9 have all been, um, the service has been, um, it's, it's been cut off for the moment. And uh, we will continue to, to bring you up to date on what is going on. And we actually, uh, you know, are hoping we'll be able to, to talk to somebody from the mayor's office in just a few minutes to see what they might do. Okay, know. right now, let's, uh, as you can see, the chopper force had to back off. Let's go back to April LaMonica up top. April? Okay, what we can tell you right now from up here in Chopper 4, we cannot get any closer than about five miles to the scene because we need to keep this far back. But you can see the black smoke as far as we are away. We can zoom in here for you. First, you saw the smoke from the one tower. Then we witnessed an explosion on the other tower. Now, we think that there was a plane that actually headed into that second tower at some point, and that's what caused that second explosion. We are unable to get close enough to actually show you or tell you what's going on at the ground, but an unbelievable sight here from above the Hudson River at this vantage point. Back to you. Something go into, into the other building, because from where I am, I can see the World Trade Center. I, co I run downstairs, and I see on the news that it, it looks like another fighter jet is what it looks like. And from my house, I can see all the smoke that's into, into Diker Heights. I can see all of that. It's ridiculous. I can't believe all of this is happening, honestly. You say you're in Di Diker Heights, yes. Lonnie? Yes. Okay. And could you hear the blast from where you were? No, I couldn't hear the blast, but I, I saw something, and it didn't look pretty. <laughs> mm -hmm. Exactly how I can, I can't explain it in any other way. I'm in shock right now. All right, Lonnie. Thank you very much. Appreciate yeah. it. Uh, so, uh, obviously, uh, visible, but not audible from, uh, mm. from my way out in Diker Heights. Uh, hey, Jim. Yes, Ali. They appear to be getting water on uh, on this fire. If you can see the uh, the south tower, the uh, black smoke is getting progressively lighter. This indicates steam, which indicates that uh, fire authorities are getting water on the flames. In the meantime, flames are still spitting out from uh, from both towers. Uh, now, uh, while the while the whatever hit the building crashed on the north side of the north tower, we see flames coming out of the east side uh, facing Queens and Brooklyn, if you will. Uh, the, uh, the flames on the south tower, which uh, appear to be getting uh, lesser and lesser, uh, is where the uh, smoke is progress getting progressively lighter and lighter, indicating that uh, the fire officials are getting closer to, uh, to putting this fire out. All right, Ali, uh, thank you. Uh, we are now uh, told that the FBI had been investigating a plane hijacking before these crashes took place. So there is the possibility that uh, perhaps one or more planes were hijacked out of one of the local airports and then taken and directly flown into the World Trade Center, smashing uh, 
the buildings themselves, and Lord knows what uh, what hey, uh, carnage took place hey, inside. Jim, can yes. you put out a note, or maybe I will myself? People have been coming up to me to try to reach their family and friends and re relatives uh, to tell them that they're okay. And uh, we, we wish you ought to put it out that uh, no one that we know of was hurt on the ground or in any place around uh, the building. That this this uh, uh, outrage appears to be. Uh, concentrated on the buildings themselves. So anybody who has a relative or a friend uh, in or Manhattan, uh, they are not likely to have been affected physically by by what happened here. All right. Again, you're looking at a split screen, two different shots of the World Trade Center. Dave, you want to say something? Uh, I would wonder at this point, given what's happened now, uh, what you just mentioned about the FBI, the fact that it is now seemingly two planes if the military or someone is going to scramble and try and protect the airspace around the southern tip of Manhattan, uh, and indeed what the situation is out at the airports right now as well. It's funny, you should, uh, not funny, but uh, apropos, uh, we are now given word that all three area airports are closed. So uh, no activity whatsoever at LaGuardia, at Kennedy, or at Newark airports. Also, there is no subway service right now on the one, two, three, nine, N and R lines. So there is no subway service in and around the World Trade Center and all three airports have closed. Mm -hmm. Just to bring you up to date, that as a result, I, I think we can say with mm -hmm. fair amount of certainty right now, two planes, large, apparently commercial jets, deliberately crashed into first one tower of the World Trade Center, then the other, just scant minutes apart. You're looking at live pictures now of the top, two, two split-screen pictures of the tops of the World Trade Center, one from a fixed camera, one from our own uh, uh, Chopper 5. And uh, obviously, that is in the middle of the work day, and perhaps there is some significance that it is a primary election day, I don't know, but that is in the middle of a work day. All those floors on both towers of the World Trade Center are certain to have been occupied, mm -hmm. and it doesn't look uh, mm -hmm. very promising for anybody who was caught in that, uh, in that terrible, mm -hmm. terrible I'm terrorist sure, Jim, act. I'm sure officials would also want to uh, say... Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Right you just it, talking it, to me yesterday. I'm sorry. Go right ahead. Uh, they're talking to you. My, you made no, your okay. point. If, if there is anyone who is heading into the city for any reason, if, if it's not an emergency, stay away from the yeah. city. Stay away from the downtown area. By all means. Uh, perhaps we can talk to Kai Simonson. Kai, can you hear me? All right. Uh, that's a, a live picture uh, from. From Kai Simonson, I'll try once again. Uh, we've had uh, communications difficulties. Uh, I'll say once again because uh, our uh, part of our communication setup is on the top of that World Trade Center building, and that was knocked out shortly after the first plane crashed into the first building. But uh, Kai, can you hear me at all? Uh, obviously, uh, yeah. obviously, uh, Kai uh, having some hey, communications Jim, problems. Over here. Yes, Ali. Uh, I must tell you that small pieces, well, they look small from here, but they're probably much larger than I believe, are falling from the scene of the, the site of the two. Uh, there goes a piece. Uh, uh, so the authorities are clearing the area around. We still have pieces of debris coming down. Not a lot, but every now and every few moments, another piece of debris, looks like aluminum siding, comes uh, flying down uh, from the scene of the two fires. Boy, again, the the, uh, the tower on the right of your screen seems to uh, seems to be uh, uh, fire seems to be dying 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 down a little bit, uh, but uh, the fire to the left of your screen still heavy, thick black smoke spewing out. Just uh, we just told now we received words that the Lincoln Tunnel and the Holland Tunnel are both closed. So just uh, as as a an aftermath of this terrorist act, terrible terrorist act, mm. the ones I suppose we feared for the longest time. Uh, there is no service in or out of any of the airports. The Lincoln and the Holland, Holland tunnels are both closed. There is no subway service at all through downtown Manhattan. 
The one, two, three, nine, N, R, any plane that goes near, any train rather, that goes near the World Trade Center has been discontinued. That as a result of what you see right there. Planes, two of them, one just minutes apart, one into one tower of the World Trade Center, the other into the other tower, causing devastation on the top floors of those buildings. It wouldn't surprise me, Jim, even though right now we just have a tentative shutdown of the subway system, if indeed the mayor or authorities uh, shut down transit, just given the fact that there may be threats or, or a potential problem securing uh, all of the major thoroughfares and tunnels throughout the city, uh, simply out of precaution, I would imagine that they might consider doing that over the next uh, short if there, term. If there were two, there may be more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Couldn't be too careful at this point. I understand we have another eyewitness uh, to the catastrophe. Shaniqua, are you there? Yes. Uh, uh, can you tell me what you saw and heard, please? Okay. Um, my grandmother's friend, she came upstairs and told us that they were bombing the Twin Towers. So me and my girlfriend, we were looking outside the window, and we saw that the airplane crashed into the Twin Tower. Tavikwa, could you do me a favor, please? Could you turn your television, set the sound down? Maybe we're having trouble hearing you. Perhaps that's the cause. Is that good enough? Uh, the, t t tell us again, if you would. I'm not sure we quite hear you well enough. Okay. Um, my grandmother friend, she came upstairs, and she was telling us how they was bombing in the tower. So me and my grandfather, we started to look out the window and actually saw the second plane crashing to the second tower. We thought it was an airplane, but we not, you know, because we don't, we, we wasn't too actually sure what type of airplane it was, but we know it was an airplane. And we heard an explosion and saw the fire. Right. All right, uh, we're having trouble. Uh, uh, communicating with uh, Vivico Cohen, an eyewitness, but uh, again, the uh, FBI in Washington is reporting that they have uh, had, had reports of planes hijacked before the crashes took place. So one would uh, suspect, uh, one, one would, would believe that the FBI was on, the, was investigating hijacked mm -hmm. planes when those planes were diverted smack into the World Trade Center, both towers. I'm told also that uh, Mayor Giuliani is preparing to hold a news conference uh, about the disaster. Uh, as soon as that happens, of course, we will bring it to you live. Dave? We might imagine, uh, given that it's primary day, that the governor himself may also be in New York City on this date. Um, given the uh, given the importance of the day uh, municipally. Well, if he isn't, I'm sure he's on his way. One would yeah, hope that, uh, absolutely. that he's not anywhere near that World Trade Center mm -hmm. office. Ali, anything new from your vantage point? No, Jim, except that uh, emergency vehicles are, fi are finding it difficult to get through, uh, not only because of the crowds, but because of the pileup of emergency vehicles. As you know, we're at the uh, south end of uh, City Hall Park, and uh, Everything is pretty much frozen here, uh, even though uh, I have not seen ambulances come out of the scene. I have seen them go in. Uh, hopefully that's a sign that there are not uh, too many casualties as a result of this. Uh, thank you, Ollie. Jim, do we have word, have they evacuated other uh, landmark buildings like the Empire State Building, the Statue of Liberty, et cetera? Yeah, we do we know? We have no word on that yet. yet. It just gives you such a horrible feeling that the city is under siege, which may not be true. This is enough with the uh, the World Trade Center, but it just it gives you such a helpless feeling. Oh, yeah. There's not much you can do mm. at this point. You, you also wonder uh, if this is indeed a hijacking, if these planes were taken over, if the people who took over these planes actually went actually were trained pilots and did the flying into these buildings themselves. Or uh, again, forced uh, these planes, forced these pilots to, to head on in. Yeah, that uh, it would be an unusual pilot who would do that. Exactly. But, but uh, uh, 
I'm told we have another eyewitness, Tom O'Hara, on the phone. Tom, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Uh, can you tell me what you heard and saw, please? Actually, uh, we uh, were in our office building on 36th Street, and I went up to the penthouse where you have a, a straight downtown view. We saw the uh, northwest uh, tower on fire, and we saw a... Uh, um, either a, a slow-moving airplane go down, wrap around the tower, and then slam into the south uh, to the south tower in a ball of flames. And could uh, from 36th Street, uh, could you hear what was going on? I couldn't hear, but we have a straight-on shot completely downtown of all of uh, of all of the goings on on the two buildings. All right, Tom. Thank you very much. You're uh, very so, so from 36th Street, uh, looking uh, across the tops of buildings, you can see mm -hmm. it very clearly. Uh, we're told now that uh, in response to your point, uh, Dave, that the city has shut down every place in and out of Manhattan. All the bridges, all the tunnels are closed. And again, all three airports are closed. So as a, as a result of this, uh, this double-barreled terrorist attack on the World Trade Center, the city has uh, shut down the um, Holland Tunnel, the Lincoln Tunnel, the George Washington Bridge, Every way in and out of Manhattan is closed, I, and I presume mm -hmm. that would be uh, from, uh, I'm sorry, uh, and, the, and the East the River East uh, crossings mm -hmm. as well. We are also told that the phone service uh, in the building, we are having a problem with the phone service, the phones don't work. Uh, Joey was saying the cell phones, you can't get out on the cell phones, cell phones as are well, out. yes. This would be a good time to say, by the way, for those who are using the emergency services number 911 mm -hmm. to somehow call and check on relatives or friends this is the time, most importantly, when that line needs to be kept open for the true emergencies which are taking place mm -hmm. in other parts of the city and indeed down on the southern tip of Manhattan at this hour. Your thought, again, all this as a consequence of uh, what you see right there. Uh, recapping for you uh, shortly before 9 o'clock and then shortly before after, uh, after 9 o'clock, a, uh, a plane apparently deliberately crashed into the upper floors of first one tower of the World Trade Center, then as we were watching in horror, another tower of the World Trade Center. There you see the aftermath. I, I, I and we have reports that. right now that uh, the President of the United States, of course this mm. terrorist act not directed on us specifically here in New York City, but at the country. Uh, we uh, are told that the President of the United States is preparing to uh, to go before the nation and comment on this mm. disaster. You look uh, the right side of your screen, the, the first uh, tower of the World Trade Center seems, um, seems uh, slightly less engulfed in flames than the one on the left, uh, that because that smoke seems to be much darker, indicating that the mm. fire would be uh, much more, uh, much more active, and uh, I'm told that we have another eyewitness, Dan Lee. Are you there? Yeah. Uh, Dan, can you tell me what you heard and saw? Yes, uh, I was crossing Sixth Avenue at West Fourth Street, and um, uh, there was a terrific noise overhead of a jet uh, crossing over, which I, you know, I noticed because it was, it was incredibly irritating that it was that loud directly over Manhattan. And as I'm watching this jet, thinking, why is it so low, I see that it's heading right for the Trade Center. And sure enough, it hit the World Trade Center and completely disappeared into the building. I, I saw no debris falling, really. It just vanished right into the building. Were there many people around you when it happened then? Uh, there were several people in the crosswalk uh, at 6th Avenue and West 4th, yes. What was their reaction? We all just froze and stood in the middle of the street uh, in disbelief watching and traffic stopped because we were in the way. And uh, we just stood there for quite some time in, in complete disbelief of what we had just seen. Where were you uh, when the second blast took place? Uh, I had managed at that point to walk a half block home, and I was watching the coverage um, uh, on television, and that's when I saw the live uh, picture of the second blast. All right, Dan, thank you very much for giving us uh, your thoughts. Here now, the President of the United States on this disaster. terrorist attack on our country. I have spoken to the Vice President, to the Governor of New York, to the Director of the FBI, and have ordered that the full resources of the federal government uh, go to help the victims and their families and, the, and to conduct a full-scale investigation.
to hunt down and to find those folks who committed this act. Terrorism against our nation will not stand. And now if you join me in a moment of silence. May God bless the victims, their families, and America. Thank you very much. All right, Mr. President, uh, uh, before a moment of silence for the victims of this terrorist act, uh, telling the nation that the full resources of the government would be brought to bear on helping the victims and on finding out who precisely is responsible for this mm. terrible, terrible attack on our country. Right there you see the aftermath, the World Trade Center towers, smoke billowing out of the upper floors, all those floors, I'm sure, fully occupied. Uh, the um, rescue attempts going forward as much as is possible, given uh, the high floors of, of those, the tallest buildings in Manhattan, and given the number of people there. Dave? Jim, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but you may be able to provide some historical perspective. How long have the Twin Towers uh, been up? And, and uh, once again, the, the, the floor height, the number of floors, I think. Yeah, I, off the top of my head, uh, I, I, or somewhere in the 60s, as I recall. And it uh, uh, goes up, what, 102 floors or so, up to the windows on the world uh, restaurant there. And, and if we remember from the last bombing, it took uh, months and months and months before that structure was certified sound again and, and uh, re-inhabited by it. And from the bottom. Right, that was a bombing yes. from the parking garage mm -hmm. level of the, of the uh, tower. That is something that, it's hard to watch this, but it, it's more bearable because I remember that particular bombing and I was on the air all morning and all afternoon with that one, is that you saw the people that were being brought out on stretchers. You actually saw bodies and, and victims. And this, we're not seeing that yet and, and we're hoping and praying that uh, there, there are very, very few injuries. Just to, but just looking at this, it just, as you say, Jim, the, the yeah. carnage is just... Uh, what we're looking at is just the, the, the long picture. It, it, it would appear, Jim, mm. as if there's more smoke coming from the ground. At, at and uh, well, we used to have another, uh, we have, uh, yes, things have fallen to the yes. ground and are burning. And we have uh, another announcement now that, uh, that you might have expected, and that is the Empire State Building is being evacuated. Uh, you're making the point, Lynn, that uh, mm -hmm. we are only seeing the the long yes. picture, if you will. Uh, we are not able to see, perhaps thankfully, inside those buildings and see what mm -hmm. kind of devastation has been caused. Mm -hmm. We're told uh, we have a pilot on the line, uh, Richard Kornacek. Are you there, Richard? Yes, I am. Uh, Richard, were you, were you uh, up in the uh, air when, uh, when this took place? No, I, I wasn't, but uh, we fly uh, alongside those buildings regularly on the, what they call the VFR corridor that goes up and down the Hudson River. And uh, did you see the, uh, the attacks this morning? Yes, I did. Uh, what was your vantage point and what did you hear and see, if you would? Well, it, it, it appears that the, the uh, you know, to, to fly an airplane right next to the Empire State Building or the World Trade Center, it, it's perfectly legal. You can do it under what they call VFR rules. And, and where those uh, airliners apparently came from, uh, it, it's really hard to say. And, they may not have even been talking to the uh, uh, controllers. Uh, it's uh, uh, possible that they were hijacked either, you know, quite a distance away or no one knows where they actually came from. But the uh, uh, ability to fly right next to the World Trade Center has always been available to any pilot who wanted to exercise that privilege. I, I, excuse me, yeah, but I just happen to live on, on the west side, and uh, there's a regular route into uh, LaGuardia uh, that comes right up the, uh, the Hudson River and then sort of banks right into LaGuardia. So uh, it would not be unusual then to see planes uh, flying near the World Trade Center, and as, as you say, Richard, uh, it's, it's, it's not unusual. But these, these uh, pilots must not have had any contact with... Uh, with the traffic control people or the FAA at all. Is that true? Uh, apparently not, because we've heard nothing uh, in contact with them. 
the airline is that come into LaGuardia when they're over the uh, uh, and that that higher car they're at, they're at maybe 2,500 feet, but you are also allowed to go down below a thousand feet along that corridor. And uh, one of the things they may have done is shut off on the airplanes they have what they call transponders, which allow the controllers to identify particularly the the aircraft. Mm -hmm. And they may have shut them off so the controllers could not actually see the airplane very well. I see. And they would only have what they call a primary target, where it would be very difficult to track them. They'd have to go back and look at their tapes to see exactly where they came from. Richard, this is Lynn Brown uh, sitting here with uh, Jim Ryan. You are saying that you are allowed to fly a plane that close to these buildings? Yes. Any it, particular type of plane? I mean, is it, a plane that big flying next to this type of building, wouldn't that seem a little out of the ordinary? That would be unusual because the airliners are all required to be on IFR flight plans and they would not normally be allowed to allowed to fly that low. However, it doesn't mean that someone could, uh, that would be absolutely unusual for a plane to, large planes to fly up and down the Hudson. But airlines routinely do not do that. Richard, would you just uh, stand by one second, please? Sure. I just want to tell the folks one thing, and that is uh, the city uh, fire department has now issued a request to all the members of the department, all firefighters, whether you're on, on your day off or whether you're on vacation, they're asking that you return to duty, that you go to your firehouse and report for duty. So uh, asking the city is asking all firefighters whether you're on vacation or whether you're on your day off or whatever, to return to your firehouse and report for duty. I'm sorry, Richard, are you still there? Yeah. All right, uh, Dave's got a question for you. Richard, can you do me a favor and take us through exactly what happens as a plane takes off and circulates around that area? What contact they would typically have with uh, the FAA or the tower at LaGuardia, Kennedy, or Newark? and uh, exactly what would appear on a radar screen to those tracking aircraft in the area. Well, let's say if you were taking off in, in a relatively small plane, say a twin engine plane or a private aircraft, and you were coming in from the south, uh, which apparently these, these came from, if they have specific areas, if you're coming in, let's say you were 20 miles out, uh, there's no requirement that you be on in uh, radar contact w with anyone or now, radio. Now, contact. Richard, I'm going to jump in. What if it were a larger aircraft? Because in, uh, at least on that second hit to us, it appeared as, as if that was at least a twin engine jet. What if you're a commercial aircraft? Uh, even a commercial aircraft is not re required to always be on an instrument flight plan. They could take off what they call VFR flight rules, There's come up the New Jersey coast. And when they got within, say, 10 miles of uh, uh, New York City, they'd have to drop down below 1,600 feet. And VFR, they'd have to then drop down when they got to uh, uh, the Verrazano Bridge. Mm -hmm. They'd have to be below 1,100 feet. My question is this. Would folks who are manning a tower, would personnel at the airports early on or relatively early on spot something alarming that something that big was below a certain altitude or near one of these skyscrapers? No, no, they wouldn't. If they came up from the south and they came up below those altitudes, even if they had their altitude reporting on, since they're below the level of where they control the airplanes, they wouldn't pay it any attention. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't have to, and normally it's not done. Uh, and realize that this is an extraordinary circumstance where apparently these planes appear to have been hijacked in some way or taken the control over them and you know it's a, it basically must have been a suicide mission uh, most of these aircraft accidents when you look at them most pilots can you know tell what really happened very quickly even though the reports take a long time to come out uh, but the controllers, let's say the controllers that are actually controlling the airliners. Richard, I'm, 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 I'm sorry, sorry, I have ground. to interrupt you. I, I apologize to you, Richard, but we have another development. Uh, okay. Thank you very much for your assistance. Appreciate it. Thank Dick you. Oliver? Yes, Jim. What can you, you hear me? Yes, I can. Go ahead. Jim, I can tell you now that the police for the last several minutes have been evacuating all of lower Manhattan. Uh, I'm standing at the, the foot of uh, City Hall Park, and uh, as I see people being screaming uh, out of the lower Manhattan area, I'm looking down Broadway, and they're encouraged, move, please move, <laughs> please move, and they're moving them north uh, towards the uh, up Broadway and towards the Brooklyn Bridge. 
Uh, so virtually all of uh, lower Manhattan is being evacuated at this time. All people except for emergency personnel are being asked to leave the area. And Ali, that may tie in with another, I must emphasize, unconfirmed report that we have that there is yet another plane on its way. So, uh, Lord knows we hope that is not the case, but we do have an unconfirmed report that another plane might be on its way. We have an eyewitness from our own staff. Thank you. How are you doing? Hi, Jim. I was in my apartment. I live on the 36th floor at 59th Street in Columbus, and I have a clear view of downtown, and I can see the towers. And I was in my living room. I was getting dressed to rush in here, and I saw one tower. It had all the smoke. And then I saw another plane that was really close, and it went behind. And you can see it doing a turn. It, it, it was turning its wings, mm -hmm. and it went around. And then I saw it go into the other tower, and I saw a big pool of flames just come out. And it was a big explosion. I didn't hear anything, so I'm, you know, I'm at 59th Street, but you could see it. And there were flames, and there was so much smoke. And you can see that it was an entire different building. But I saw it. It was a different plane. So, mm -hmm. so two different uh, planes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, uh, when you left your building, you went downstairs to, to come in here. What uh, what kind of a reaction did you encounter on the streets? Were people aware of it? Were people frightened by it? Absolutely, people are aware of it. I mean, I, just walking here, I was hearing people saying, you know, it was one plane, it was two plane, and everyone was hearing sirens. And people, I, I know people were trying to use their cell phones. No one could get a cell out. And my taxi driver was talking about it. And he had the radio up, and he was, when we would stop, he would put his window down and tell the other guy. So everybody knows about it, I think, at this point, and they're talking about it. But then, uh, we just uh, got word uh, that uh, from the Associated Press that uh, it's uh, pretty sure now that one of those... Uh, well, it, it sounds to me like we... Jane, we're just getting a report that there's been an attack on the Pentagon. This is the Pentagon. This is, this is from the network. This is the Pentagon in Arlington, Virginia. This, these are pictures that have just come in to us here at News Channel 4. You are looking at live pictures of what appears to be an attack on the Pentagon. Um, we can tell you nothing more than what you were looking at. Um, this is approximately an hour ago that we had one airplane crash into the northern of the World Trade Center towers, and um, about 18 minutes later, another airplane crashed into the southern of the towers and now we have this. We also hear that the uh, the first plane that hit the World Trade Center was apparently hijacked after takeoff from Boston. That it means there's a very good possibility that that plane did have some passengers on board. Huge flames, huge flames. Dave, I'm, I'm going to have to interrupt you I'm afraid but uh, the, the, the dimensions of this catastrophe are growing. We are told now that a this is not quite confirmed yet, but we are told fairly reliably that a plane, a plane has crashed into the Pentagon in Washington. So not only have we had uh, a terrible catastrophe here in New York, where planes crashed into both towers of the World Trade Center, but we are told now that a plane has crashed into the military complex in Washington, the Pentagon, which of course uh, houses the uh, nerve center of all the military operations of this country. So. A, a one, two, three attack on the on the United States apparently today. Two here in New York and one in Washington at the Pentagon. There you see a live picture uh, from Washington. Uh, we would have to guess that that smoke is emanating from the Pentagon in the background. So uh, the military nerve center of this country has been attacked by terrorists. And because of that, we are told that the White House has now been evacuated. Explosions at the World Trade Center here in New York, where two planes slammed into the buildings. I would imagine. Okay, this, uh, that's, that's the picture in Washington. So now we can say uh, with certainty uh, that uh, there have been at least three attacks on uh, visible symbols of our country. Two here in New York and one in Washington. You're looking at... Uh, at two different views of the World Trade Center, uh, where planes, first uh, one tower and then another plane, a larger plane, uh, into the other tower, uh, crashed just before and after 9 o'clock. And then just moments ago, 
A third plane crashed into the Pentagon, which, uh, as you know, houses uh, the nerve center of our military uh, might, and uh, that certainly is an unprecedented attack upon this country. Uh, one would presume uh, by by uh, suicidal terrorists, and uh, I imagine we'll find out soon enough uh, who staged this attack and uh, what will be done about it. You know, the, uh, we're getting something on the wire also about the, uh, the stock exchange, uh, which planned to open this morning at 10, uh, is delaying a half an hour. So we've got developments all over the place. And I don't know about your computers. Now, I'm starting to have a problem with my computer. Hmm. It is just randomly jumping from one story to the other. Given no, going forward, mm. uh, as, as there, are, there are, I think, uh, stories are, on, are incoming mm. on a very rapid basis, so that would be the... Given what we're seeing, mm. at this point, I would imagine major buildings in major cities, from the Sears Tower in Chicago to uh, other symbols, as you mentioned, Jim, mm. in, uh, in uh, Washington and Boston, uh, I would imagine are all going to be on mm. high alert, if not mm. evacuated in, in Washington. The west wing of the White House and the Capitol building have both uh, been evacuated. Okay, so in, uh, in Washington, just to, to recap now, uh, on this terrible, terrible day, uh, here in New York, you happen to be looking at a picture in Washington, so we'll start with that. That's in, in Washington, a, a plane has, uh, has struck the Pentagon in uh, Washington. And uh, that, of course, houses our, our military, our military nerve center. And that um, has taken place. And the Pentagon now, obviously, being evacuated. The uh, west wing of the White House is being evacuated. And here in New York, two terrorist attacks on the World Trade Center. A plane deliberately smashed into the upper floors, first of one tower, and then several minutes later, the other tower, two large planes. We understand the second one, or the first one rather, was, was uh, hijacked from Boston, and presumably loaded with passengers. Uh, so as a consequence of these terrorist attacks here in New York, uh, we have the island of Manhattan virtually isolated. You cannot get in or out of Manhattan by any bridge or any tunnel. And any subway train that goes anywhere near the World Trade Center is not running. All right, Dick Oliver was fairly close to the scene when it happened. He was reporting on, on what is now an afterthought to this day, the primary election, uh, uh, down at City Hall when the blasts took place. Ollie? Uh, I don't know if Ollie is... Uh, he, we, again, our, uh, our, part of our television operation is on top of the World Trade Center. Uh, so uh, we lost the picture. Yes, you're coming to us by phone. Ollie? Yeah, Jim, I, uh, I hear you now. I'm uh, down by the Brooklyn Bridge now, where people are streaming over the bridge, uh, go heading towards Brooklyn, obviously. The police are encouraging people to get out of Lower Manhattan. Uh, so uh, that's going on now. There are some cars being permitted to clear away to allow more and more pedestrians to get over the, uh, the Brooklyn Bridge. Is there any... Is there any vehicular traffic on the bridge, Ali? There's just a little bit uh, coming off uh, on the side ramps. The south ramp has some traffic on it, but that's going very, very slowly. The pedestrians have, ta have taken over the, uh, the entire bridge, uh, almost the entire bridge. Now, as far as the, uh, the first blast is concerned, I did hear some kind of a, a scream. Uh, well, uh, just a second, a split second, before that tremendous blast. Uh, and I did not know it was an aircraft. I did not know what it was. Uh, but uh, you, were, you were able to confirm uh, what, uh, what happened with the, uh, the second explosion in the second tower. Ali, let me just interrupt you for a second, if I may. Uh, we are told now that the White House has been threatened with a terrorist attack. Uh, one, uh, maybe some sort of a, a verbal threat, I don't know, but one would assume that, uh, that the White House, given the fact that the Pentagon was under attack and the World Trade Center was under attack, uh, this country is uh, under attack by terrorists, both here in New York and in Washington. And uh, just moments ago, the President of the United States uh, went in before the nation to make this announcement. It just...
Mm -hmm. uh, I was. I. I understand. Uh, we had. We're going to rerun the bite of the president. Okay. Here it is. Uh, today we've had a national tragedy. Uh, two airplanes have crashed into the World Trade Center in an apparent terrorist attack on our country. I have spoken to the Vice President, to the Governor of New York, to the Director of the FBI, and have ordered that the full resources of the federal government uh, go to help the victims and their families and, the, and to conduct a full-scale investigation to hunt down and to find those folks who committed this act. Terrorism against our nation will not stand. And now if you join me in a moment of silence. All right, that was the uh, president uh, just a few minutes ago announcing that the full resources of the government would be uh, uh, put to uh, help, the, uh, help the, uh, the victims of these tragedies and to, uh, and to find out who did it. And uh, I'm also told now that the, FB, the FAA has announced from Washington that no aircraft anywhere in the country is being allowed to take off. That's from the FBA, from the FAA, because apparently these two planes that smashed into the uh, World Trade Center and perhaps the one in the Pentagon as well were hijacked commercial uh, jets uh, from various airports. So as, uh, as a result of that, the FAA has announced that no aircraft is being allowed to take off anywhere in the country. All right, Jim, we do have yes. someone who has just joined us on the set here. Uh, his name is Joseph Jaffe. And Mr. Jaffe, where are you from? Decision Strategies Fairfax. We're an investigative consulting and security firm. Mm. All right. What do you make of this? Well, it's a tragedy, and it appears, if it didn't appear first from the first plane, after the second plane, and now the one at the, at the Pentagon, that there's a well-coordinated effort afoot to bring terrorism to the United States. What could have been done, if anything, to prevent this kind of an attack? At this juncture, it's very hard to guess. Uh, we have a country that's wide open. We have borders that are wide open. We have freedoms that are wide open. And over the past 25 and 30 years, some of us have been following terrorism for at least that long. Uh, our country does not generally get into the investigation of terrorism the way it ought to, in terms of being the state that could prevent it. We value our freedom more, so there's very little you can do to take a person who's bent on killing himself or herself, taking over a plane. I mean, of course, you could, you could enforce measures and, and be very strict on who gets onto what planes and how that would work. But that isn't going to work in this country. I'm, I'm told, uh, Mr. Chaffee, that we have a, is it a picture of the Pentagon? Let's just take a, uh, uh, this is a picture of the, of the central military headquarters of our country, uh, the Pentagon of the United States. Apparently, the president. This is the this is the president's plane uh, taking off uh, from Florida, where he had been heading back to Washington to uh, deal with the emergency. Mr. Jaffe, uh, uh, Dave, Dave, you had a question. Well, two things. Number one, I was going to ask Mr. Jaffe. You said you're ba ba either based out of Fairfax or your company is down. Uh, uh, we have a, a, our companies in New York and in, in Falls Church. Virginia. Okay, Falls Church, Virginia. You uh, would very well know, as as anyone who flies into the Washington area, what's stunning about the Pentagon attack. All right, let's go back to Michelle uh, Charlesworth now on West Side Highway. Can you hear us now, Michelle? People Michelle? We've been watching this unfold. We came down here about 30 minutes ago. We're on the West Side Highway, just north of Canal Street. Now, about 45 minutes ago, the city shut down the south bound lanes of the west side highway so that emergency crews only fire trucks nypd trucks could get down here i don't know if we can swing over and show uh, as this as this aftermath unfolds and the plumes of smoke behind me billow from the uh, world trade center people are literally getting away the only way they can on foot people have been walking by here with their hands over their mouths and screaming at each other to try to borrow cell phones but there's no way to get away from here because the bridges and tunnels have been closed they've been asking me whether or not the uh, hudson uh, whether there was any way to get out of the city and of course there is some concern as to what could be in the smoke that's the question most of the people have been asking me 
what could possibly be in the smoke. They're listening to their radios. President Bush, of course, saying that this is apparently a terrorist attack on our country. And now the latest word from Washington that possibly the Pentagon has been hit by the same kind of attack. There have been some witnesses actually who came by here who said that it was definitely one plane and then another within minutes of each other hitting the World Center Trade Center towers, the North Tower, then the South Tower, and that from what they could see, this was definitely no accident. In the words of President Bush again, apparently a terrorist attack on our country. And I don't know if we can show more and more ambulances moving all the way down the south side of the West Side Highway. This has been closed now for about uh, an hour. Of course, this whole thing unfolding about an hour ago, not even an hour ago. Um, but I will continue to let you know what's going on here. We are again just north of Canal Street on the West Side Highway. The only way people are moving out of here is to walk. You can probably see people carrying their briefcases uh, walking by me. We're live on the West Side Highway. Michelle Charles with ABC News. Back to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Michelle. We know that Bellevue Hospital, so let's foretell this Bellevue Hospital has been confirmed, uh, is the triage center. It is where they are taking many of the mm -hmm. folks admitted. Now, I know there are a lot of folks who have relatives. Only four people right now have been admitted. Take that for however that, that is. Uh, if we could also send word to one of our producers there, too. The flight from Boston, uh, how many people were on board Trying that flight? Trying to find out. Find right. out how many folks were on board that flight as well. Yeah. Yeah. At all. All right, let's go to David Usher. Of course, we talked about, he's in our newsroom, we talked about uh, all the airports across the country being shut down, but you've gotten word of other closings, Dave? Yeah, Lori, we're trying to diffuse through the information that's coming into the newsroom. Some of it you've already reported, but essentially the government officials are trying to go into defensive mode now until they figure out exactly what's happening. And as Jim Dolan explained, they are trying to limit the vulnerability of other places. The Hudson River crossings have been closed, and that, as you can imagine, is creating a bit of commuter chaos. This is a live picture now from the the GW Bridge, New Jersey officials say they've gone into an alert mode. They're shutting these down, all of the Hudson River crossings as well. You've already mentioned the airports, not only here in New York City, but across the entire country. Okay, we have another reporter uh, out on the street, Walter Perez. Uh, can you hear us, Walter? Here we are about two blocks away from... Okay, two blocks away from where the whole thing happened, and this entire area has been cordoned off, and people that have been working in nearby buildings have been told to evacuate. That's what this mass exodus is to my left-hand side. To my right, we have two witnesses, and as we speak with you two, we're going to pan up and show a shot of what we see from this vantage point. First, Marna Ringel, and Marna, you work across the street. Tell me exactly what you saw on the street, and as you looked up, what you saw, because you said you saw the second one. Am I correct? No, I didn't see the second one. I actually was coming out of the building, and there was maybe about 30 or 40 people at the bottom of One World Financial covered in blood. I did not expect that at all, and I work for Lehman in one right here, and a gentleman that I work with was on the telephone. He said, what was that? I said, I, you know, he thought it was thunder. I looked over and screamed, it's a bomb, because I saw a piece of the building flow down, and I think I scared my entire floor because I can scream pretty loud, and it was pretty bad. Now, you mentioned that you saw people on the road outside of the building. Explain that scene. I, I saw um, there's maybe about 30 or 40 people uh, covered with bandages and blood. It looks like a lot of them were either on the floor of one of the exchanges. There's actually, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. We're not sure exactly what happened, but it was another explosion on the far side of one of the buildings from where we're standing. The, ver the, the reverberation and another explosion on the right-hand side. Another building has gone. Another building has gone up on the right-hand side of the road. People are now running down the street. We're not sure if that was another explosion or if that was advanced de debris. Joining me also is Jim Plant. Jim, you're also a witness of what happened. Tell me exactly what you saw from your vantage point across the street. Uh, I was just across Liberty and in, uh, in West here, and I saw the second plane hit the uh, uh, Tower 2. It looked like a 737. It uh, hit a glancing blow, it didn't hit it direct. I don't know where the rest of the plane went, uh, but it went in, fireball came out, and it hit lower than the first uh, plane, which hit uh, the upper floors. Jim, thank you very much. At this point, as you can tell, there's absolute pandemonium in this area because of what had just happened. Exactly what, I can't confirm, but on the far side of the building, there seemed to be another explosion. And also on the right-hand side, there was also another explosion. We're not sure if that was uh, extra reverberation from what happened at the World Trade Center or if that was an added explosion. At this point, there's a, a lot of smoke, massive plumes of smoke falling from the building across the street. People that were running down the street or walking are now running away. We don't have any information as far as what the most recent uh, reverberations were, but from two blocks away, you could feel what happened. We'll get more information and pass it along to you. 
uh, a few minutes ago, indicating that they're making some progress in, in putting those flames out. But now there seems to be a lot of smoke coming from the lower portion of the World Trade Center. And again, we had a, a report. A new uh, black smoke. Um, we had a report indicating that, uh, that there was an explosion on the lower floors now. We were talking. Perhaps, uh, Sorry, we can't, uh, we can't uh, communicate with Dick Oliver. He's mm -hmm. down somewhere uh, in that area, but uh, the, only com the only audio contact we have with him is by uh, cell telephone, and we're having problems with those as well. So there's a live picture. All right, uh, uh, Brandy, are you on the phone? I am, uh, sir. Brandy, uh, uh, where are you now? I am in Clinton Hill, Brooklyn. I live on the 15th floor. Yeah. Um, I have a terrace that faces the World Trade Center. Yeah. If I am home and all of the lights are on, if, some, if one floor turns out all of their lights, I can see that one floor turn out. I can see everything. I was in my bed this morning. My whole building shook. I got up, looked to see what was going on. Everything was up in flames. Ten minutes later, not literally, the other plane, I swear to you, deliberately went into the next World Trade Center building. Deliberately. There was no mistake about it. It deliberately went in there. I have a clear view of everything. Just two seconds ago, half of the building just fell out. There's nothing but white smoke. I can no longer see the World Trade Center now. It's all up in smoke. The smoke is on my terrace. That's how close I am. My mom is coughing because the smoke is on my terrace. And you're across the, the bay in Brooklyn. I'm across the bay in Brooklyn. I can see everything. We're in Clinton Hill, Brooklyn. This is the, the scariest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. It was like television. Now, when when the uh, when the, the, the you say it seemed as if the side had fallen off the building. If the side of the building has fallen out. It seemed like there was another explosion. I heard something go boom, and everything just like fell out. Is that a third explosion now? It seemed, I don't know if it was a third explosion or was it from the, the fire. Oh. No, you saw you 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 uh, you heard the first explosion and you saw the, the and you saw the second plane go in. I saw the se second plane go in and it was actual deliberate. There and, was no way as a pilot that you would not and fly after, around that smoke. And after Brandy, after you saw that second plane hit the deliberately as you say the side of the World Trade Center, then you heard a third explosion? Then I heard not necessarily a third explosion. Just 10 minutes ago, like the, like a whole side of the building just fell out. I see. And I could hear like the rumble, the crash of all the windows coming down. So that could indicate some sort of a weakness, uh, the, the, the right. structure now, of the building weakened. I can't even see the World Trade Center building. It's, it's too much covered with smoke. It's too much covered with smoke. I see. Well, I Brand mean, the smoke is coming on my terrace. That's how much smoke it is. I see, uh, Brandy. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure it was a harrowing experience for you, so thank you for sharing uh, your experiences with us. I appreciate it. Uh, Mr. Jaffe, uh, again, we're talking, you, your firm again is? Uh, decision Strategies for de Effects. Decision Strategies. As we look uh, at a picture of the smoke coming from the Pentagon building in, uh, in, in Washington, uh, we now head into uh, perhaps a new era in this country as far as protection against terrorist activity is concerned. Uh, do you think that's a, that's a fair statement? I think we're going to have a very heightened awareness. I think we have to in, in terms of protecting the things that are basic to us. I think we have to be careful, though, not to overdo it to the point that we wind up uh, compromising completely what we've come to expect. If we overreact and take away the basic liberties we need, we'll have a problem. On the other hand, we can be very, very concerned, very concise, and do what we need to do and still be respective of what the country stands for. But the most important piece, I think, Okay, but just uh, I'm sorry for interrupting no, okay. you all the time, but but uh, what we heard from Brandy just a few minutes ago uh, apparently has now been confirmed that a portion of the side of the World Trade Center has indeed collapsed. Now, whether, whether that's just the outer wall or whether that goes right into the offices, I don't know. But you're looking at a live picture there, and smoke is emanating from the entire building. And uh, we had Brandy on the phone just a, a short time ago. Uh, from Brooklyn, and uh, she said that uh, she heard some sort of, she didn't know whether it was an explosion or not, but uh, certainly a very loud sound, and then the side of the building, she said, just gave way, and uh, you see all the smoke now, she says, from her vantage point in Brooklyn, uh, she can, all she can see is uh, smoke. Brandy, are you still with us by any chance? Yeah, apparently, uh, she's, 
She's, uh, you know, we're joined by uh, Rosanna Scott. Good morning, Rosanna. Morning, Jim. You know, we knew we were going to have a big day today with the primaries. That has obviously taken a back seat right now. What we are hearing is the Board of Elections are meeting right now to determine whether to call off the primary today. And this is unprecedented. This has sure. never happened. Now, if it was uh, a general election, there is stipulations in, in the charter which say some kind of act of, that we don't know of them. Mm. In nature, you can call it off. But for a primary, there's nothing in the charter that says you can call it off. But obviously, there are a lot of polling stations down in that area of the World Trade Center, and if not inside the Trade Center, and obviously those are closed right now. So we'll, we will know in the next hour or so whether the primary has been postponed for a day or so. Yeah, I don't see how they could go forward with it. Uh, no, with not it. at all, because it that lost be, its uh, That would be a long shot. Yeah, certainly, uh, certainly only from the standpoint uh, of, if, if not from the standpoint of polling places being mm -hmm. closed, but from people losing interest in an exactly. election or in the face of an overwhelming tragedy. I just left my, my home to come here and it's it's really, it's, it's kind of scary because all you hear are the constant screams of ambulances and fire trucks racing through the street. Anybody, you know, I was walking trying to get to a bus or a taxi or anything to get here and all anybody could talk about was what's going on, do you have any information? It's, it is the talk of the town right now and rightly so. Um, my husband, as you know, works down near the World Trade Center. He called me a little after 9 o'clock this morning. He had just gotten into his building. He was walking up the steps, and he heard a loud bang. He said it felt like an earthquake. And all of a sudden, he said it looked like confetti coming from the sky. Now, he's a few blocks away. And he didn't know what it was. He went up into his office. He has a clear view of the World Trade Center from there. And he claims he saw either people falling out of the building or jumping out of the building this morning. Um, and my husband is pretty unflappable. No. He's an attorney. Uh, he was, he was uh, shaken me, up this excuse morning. Excuse me one second, Rosanna, because I think we're about to see a picture uh, of, this is a few moments ago. Watch this. This is the side of the building just collapsing. Uh, there you oh, see. Boy. There you see. Now, whether that oh. is, whether that is the result of just uh, further weakening of the structure of the building, or whether that's yet another terrorist attack. I don't know. I, I would I would imagine the former, that the uh, the building structure just uh, weakens to the point mm -hmm. where the wall, uh, no longer able to sustain the weight, uh, just uh, just caved. But that uh, that was the uh, the uh, east side of the world, the north tower of the World Trade Center, uh, caving in. And just a few moments ago, we had a woman named Brandy on the phone, and. Uh, she told us it was another loud roar, and she told us also this is a uh, Kai. Can you hear me? Kai, tell us what we're looking at here. Uh, these are all right. These are fighter jets. One would presume uh, to uh, prevent any further uh, attacks by planes. If they see any plane coming now, it better not be an innocent. Uh, commercial flight because mm. uh, uh, I should imagine those fighter jets are up there to intercept mm. uh, and shoot down any plane that comes mm. their way. No, I think everything has been grounded. That's by right. The all, the, the, all the airports so, across yeah, the country closed. have been closed. And I heard that right now they're inspecting and really inspecting Air Force One because uh, it's been around this morning and before the, point, uh, the president gets on it, they want to make sure that it's a safe plane to get on. Okay. Okay. We have, we have reporters on the ground. One of them is Michelle Charlesworth, who you heard from just a few moments ago. Michelle, where are you and what do you see? Uh, I'm not going to be able to communicate with you. You'll be able to hear me, but I can't hear you. We're on the West Side Highway, and I am sad to report that we actually watched the entire South Tower of the World Trade Center come down, screams from everyone on the sidewalks as they thought that perhaps another plane had slammed into the side of these buildings. We're hearing late reports that there might be fighters, U.S. fighters, in the air, patrolling the area, of course, the bridges and the tunnels. That's a confirmation. There's one right above me. Bridges and tunnels have been shut down. The only way to leave the city at this point is on foot, and everyone from the World Trade Center area has been moving through here. I can only hope that people got out of that area. I'm pointing up to show the fighters right now. I can only hope that people got out of the area on the sidewalks below the South Tower uh, before it came tumbling down. 
but it literally exploded and came down as though it had been hit. Uh, plumes of smoke moving out into the harbor. Can we see how many fighters there are up there? One fighter. One fighter. Uh, as far as we know, there is nothing left of the South Tower of the World Trade Center. There were reports elevators weren't working. Uh, obviously, no way to get out of the building aside from the um, stairway. You can see the smoke all over this area. And to give you some idea where I am, I'm approximately, what, 20, 30 blocks from where this latest explosion just happened. The West Side Highway southbound has been filled with emergency vehicles. It's shut off except for uh, uh, NYPD vehicles and fire trucks. Uh, again, the South Tower of the World Trade Center just coming down right in front of us. We watched it happen just moments ago and actually got video of it, so we'll be showing you that. Reporting live on the West Side Highway in Manhattan, Michelle Charles with ABC7 Eyewitness News. You sit here and you look at this, and as journalists, you are not supposed to inject any of your personal feelings. But I'm sitting here, I'm looking at this, and... I'm mad as hell. <laughs> I, I really am. I am so angry that something like this could take place in our country. It disrupt our lives, yeah. Well, I think it's also frightening. I mean, let's face it, we're journalists, but we also live in this city. Thank you. We have children yeah. we're, we're, that we're raising in this city, so we have concerns just like everybody else, and we want to keep this place safe. Um, and who would think in our lifetime that we would see something like this? Yeah. Should, uh, should we have been aware of this, uh, Mr. Mm -hmm. Jeffy? Should we have been some inkling? Because apparently we got blindsided here. I would think and the government has various motives and each of the various pieces of the government have other intelligence sources, but I would hope that we would be on top of some of this. And in years past, sometimes we weren't, sometimes we weren't, but at least we had an inkling. Uh, it seems to me one of the things we have to do is to increase our intelligence gathering faculties domestically as well as overseas, especially domestically. That may frighten some people because they don't want to have their rights compromised. On the other hand, we have to give up something in order to be safe to the extent that they've accomplished our becoming fearful and you becoming angry. Mm -hmm. They've created a situation we have to rectify and we have to do it quickly. Do you think the FBI mm -hmm. is going to come under a lot of fire for letting something like this slip? This obviously seems like a well-planned attack. Mm -hmm on New York and Washington, and we don't know... Uh, allow me to interrupt you, okay. please. This is Rick Leventhal with Fox News Channel. Uh, the smoke is obviously clear from what? Ma'am, she's with DCPI. Can you talk to us for just a second? Bring us up to speed. Obviously, people have their hands full out here. It's not easy getting anyone to talk. Yeah, tell me where you were, what happened, what did you okay. see, what did you hear? First, I went on Canal Street, I saw the fire. I saw the two buildings. I'm thinking it was, a, it was a bomb because it's two of them. Anyway, when I got there, I tried to save people because I'm a doctor. When I tried to save people, the moment we heard a big explosion coming down, everything just went black. Everything came down, glass started popping. People got hurt, stuff went on top of them. And it was a big explosion. And everything got dark, real dark, like snow. You can see behind me, all oh, this is not snow. It's, this is all from the building. It was a terrible nightmare. Where exactly were you standing when this happened? I was standing right in front of the World Trade Center. So you were down the block here? And right you came there, in the middle, this way? right, yeah. Everything. Did you get hurt at all? No, not me. Did you see anyone around you getting caught up in it? Yeah, we was around with, with the firemen. We all, we got hurt. We all went inside to this dark. We was inside the building when everything happened. But we came out alive. What's minute. your name? My name is Dr. Angel. Did, were you able to, to assist anyone before this happened? Yes, I did. I, I, I help a lot of patients. A lot of them. Well, there are a lot more people that need help they now. Need help, so if, yeah. you're, if you're capable, maybe you should. Uh... Um, yes, I'm going to go back. I lost my ID, but I try to go back. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks a lot for All talking right. to us. Thanks. We, uh. How you, can you talk to us for a second? Jesus, just. Huh? I saw a trade started down. Well, tell me what you saw. All right. I was coming down 6th Avenue, running down to meet this truck. Well, Pat Muscoff, um, Fox I'm News Engineer. Go ahead. Go ahead. Start again. All, I'm coming down 6th Avenue. All the traffic, all the people traffic was running up. And I'm looking up, I'm trying to call the station, trying to find where we are. And I look up and the tower just starts crumbling down. And everybody in the street just stops and started crying and bawling. And I'm standing next to a fireman, he said, yeah, they just bombed the Pentagon too. So uh, uh, that's basically where I saw. Then I came running down here, traffic's not allowed past Warren Street. And, uh, and you see what's here. Which, do you know which of the two towers? Uh, the one without the main antenna on it. The second one that was hit. That's the further south? This more uh, south, southerly tower? I think it's tower one. I'm not too sure the exact one. And you actually happened. saw it from the top I down I saw it come, just come tumbling. It came sideways like this. It just collapsed in on, on top of itself. 
It was, it was amazing, but uh, very upsetting to watch the whole thing come tumbling down. So we all thought it was another explosion, and uh, we looked up. Instead of being two, there's one. Just an unbelievable big, scene big here. It's, uh, it's, almost, uh, it's, it's, it's almost difficult to describe what's going on here. It's unbelievable. You can see that we have One World Trade Center completely engulfed in flames. The upper floor is completely engulfed in flames. World uh, Two World Trade Center has collapsed. It collapsed, uh, I guess, about 15 minutes or so ago. We had two planes, uh, as you've been hearing. Uh, one plane hit uh, uh, One World Trade a short time ago. Uh, I guess it's going back about 45 minutes or to maybe to an hour or so ago. And then shortly after that, another plane. We actually witnessed the plane coming up the East River and it seemed to be getting dangerously close to, uh, to World Trade, and uh, we thought that it was going to hit, and it did, in fact, hit. Uh, we saw the explosion and uh, all of the debris fo uh, fl uh, flowing uh, down toward the uh, lower Manhattan there, and uh, it it's, it's just incredible how... Right now, right now uh, what we see on the ground down here is that the, the entire area of lower Manhattan right now is completely engulfed in a big black cloud of smoke. Now, we, uh, we did have some people down there that were uh, shooting some tape for us. Uh, they said that the entire area is completely engulfed in smoke right now. It's very, very difficult to see at this point. And right now, our concerns in terms of uh, what we're doing up here is that the area, as we understand it, has been sealed off. The airspace has been sealed off. So uh, they are not allowing uh, people to come in and out of the airspace at this point. We are able to stay here right now, but no commercial traffic is being allowed to exit or enter the airspace right now. And we did hear uh, some reports that there were hundreds of people. That we, we did hear reports that there were hundreds of people, if not more, on the ground that were injured. There are obviously numerous casualties involved in all of this. Now, uh, in, in terms of flying right now, uh, our concern right now is just basically keep an eye out for any planes, any suspicious planes that enter the airspace. Right now, by definition, any plane that we see enter the airspace, if it's not an American fighter jet, which we have seen, or if it's not a news helicopter or a police helicopter, is suspicious at this point, and uh, we need to get out of, the w out of their way. We in World Trade. You were in the building? Yes. We did not see the debris hit anything uh, specific on the ground uh, because we are being kept at a distance right now. We're being kept at uh, three, four miles away. Actually, I'm being told now by my pilot we're being kept at a minimum of five mile, five mile radius of the World Trade Center. That is for our own safety and also for the safety of the people on the ground. The debris, it's, it's very, very difficult to determine which way the debris fell. It may have fallen toward the east, but I'm, very, I'm really not sure at this point which way the building collapsed. Uh, it was very difficult to see. It kind of erupted in a, in a big cloud of, uh, of dust and, and, uh, and smoke at this point. So it was very difficult to see which way the debris fell. But it did appear that it may have fallen over toward the east side of the island. You can see it's, a, it's an incredible scene here. It's almost the entire southern tip of Manhattan completely engulfed in smoke at this point. And uh, we are told that it is virtually impossible to see down there. I can only imagine what emergency crews are going through at this point, not being able to see, trying to fight uh, a fire. Right now, it's just kind of a mute point. Uh, basically, uh, I would think that right now the priority is just to preserve life at this point. Uh, the fire continues to burn at the top of uh, One World Trade. Two World Trade, as I told you a little bit earlier, collapsed, and it appeared as though it was collapsing over toward the east side of the, the island, but uh, that has not been confirmed. I can't be sure of that uh, completely. But just an incredible scene out here. It's, it's really uh, almost difficult to describe. Again, the words of uh, Kai Simonson, uh, who is up in the air uh, in the chapter five. Um, he was up in the air with his camera focused on the building when the second plane rammed into the uh, World Trade Center. And it must have been uh, a uh, it must have been quite a sight for him and quite an experience. So, Jim, I'm, the, I'm told Mario Boskis, excuse okay. me, Rosanna, but I'm told Mario Boskis is on the phone from Beth Israel Hospital. Mm -hmm. Mario? Hello, Jim. I'm at Beth Israel Medical Center, as you said, in downtown Manhattan on the east side, is, along with Bellevue Medical Center, has become a staging area to receive uh, the injured, the victims from, of course, the World Trade Center uh, situation, the tragedy that took place there. We are seeing many ambulances pulling up with people. 
uh, coming on wheelchairs and stretchers, uh, bandages about the head and arms and legs. They don't they don't appear at this point to be uh, major injuries, but they appear to be stunned as they're taken out of the hospital, uh, out of the ambulance into the hospital. We understand Bellevue at this point is also receiving people, uh, doing triage there as well. Again, Beth Zero and, Me and Bellevue uh, taking in uh, victims apparently from the World Trade Center. In addition, Jim, people on the streets, I can tell you along First Avenue walking around totally stunned. The TV sets in some shops are turned on loud, pointed out toward the streets as people come out of their apartments to, to watch these uh, developments as they unfold. But again, at Beth Israel, uh, they have many ambulances that are standing by to go to the area. We also understand Beekman Hospital hospital is where many of the injured. I was running my way there to try to get coverage there when I stopped at Beth Israel to get the situation here. And as you might imagine, the medical personnel are running around uh, the area preparing uh, to take in more victims. I'm, I'm sure they will. Uh, by the way, I should tell the viewers, Mario, that uh, you're looking at uh, the picture on Fox News Channel. Uh, they have a reporter on the ground. Perhaps we could uh, listen to that interview. It's in the World Financial Center, right across the street. World Financial Center is right across the street from the Marriott Hotel. And when we were walking by, you looked at the Marriott Hotel. I don't even think it's there anymore. So, well, I, I don't know what else to ask you. I mean, it's just an incredible story. It's just a horrible. I, do you, do you, it's an absolute shame. Do you, do you think you know people who were on the floors that were hit? I, you just pray with the evacuated people. Unfortunately, the evacuated people, both sides of the World Financial Center. I don't know if you know if you're talking. You know, talking about the uh, the other side. We were by the water, by the ferries and Morans in, in that area. Uh, you just hope the people on the other side, they've actually evacuated them out. And that's the fear, I guess, with this building here. This, you just see the fire, like, you know, 20 stories. That you, know, you worry about the building giving out and it's dead. So how far away from the building were you when it collapsed? I was uh, right, by the, right by where the people get on for the ferry, right next to Morant, to the, to the right of Morant. So but 10 blocks, yeah, 20 blocks? Uh, 10 blocks away. And then there, there was a decent crowd, and that's when everyone just dispersed. All right. Thanks for, uh, Thank for talking you. to us. Thank you. I appreciate what's your name? All right, Rick, Rick Leventhal. Where are you from? With Fox News Channel. As, as Rick Leventhal continues to report from the streets of Manhattan, as this devastation occurs and continues to unfold, and you can see on the right-hand side of your screen, there is only one. Can they hear? So there you're listening. You're listening to the Fox uh, News Channel, uh, their coverage of, uh, of, the, uh, of the catastrophe. But I must say, and I hate to say this, but we had eyewitness reports earlier on that uh, the World Trade Center being 110 stories high, there were people who were falling from the windows and uh, and who were jumping. Let's listen to this interview from Rick Leventhal. thought the building was going to topple over. It was going so... F well, one of them it. did. One of them did. We were in town one. We made it out. Well, you're a lucky man. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks. All right, take care. Clearly, this is a nationwide catastrophe, but folks... Uh, Rick Leventhal talking to several eyewitnesses down there. That looks like uh, another gentleman. Call your loved ones. If you have any other way, perhaps email. If you have any other way, oh, but, uh, we're not listening to the uh, to the interview on uh, Fox News Channel, so uh, we'll we'll come back. Uh, James, can I just step in one second? We do have reports that the State Department has okay, been Okay, so hit so virtually well. every important office mm -hmm. building in Washington State, State Treasury, yes. uh, too late for the Pentagon mm -hmm. because the attack has already hit there, but that is being yeah. evacuated as well. And we should mention that the New York okay. City Fire Department is appealing to anyone who's off duty or on vacation. Please, if you're a fire person, please report to work immediately. They need your help. Obviously, you know, after we, we saw the planes hit the building, we kind of thought everything was over. It's not over. The tower, one tower has collapsed. People on the ground are getting hurt, if not killed. The story just seems not to be anywhere near ending. Well, listen, to, listen to this. sky and you can't do nothing about it. You tell me. You tell me what you think. I mean, uh, my heart's in my mouth. I mean, I, I pray for these people. It, it's, it's, there's no words to describe what's going on out there. I mean, you see bodies just coming a half hour later, still coming out of the goddamn sky. Devastating. Devastating. I can't imagine anything worse than this. There's got to be... I can't imagine. You know everybody on a plane must have died? The floor, I got people, friends of mine on 104th floor, friends on other buildings. I just spoke to one of my friends a half hour prior to that, getting ready to go upstairs to go to work. I mean, I've seen a lot of construction accidents. I've seen a lot of bad things happen. I've never seen a jet fall out of the sky into a building, no less once, but twice. Devastating.
I want to bring into the uh, conversation. Uh, oh, we'll just uh, add to what uh, that uh, gentleman said that uh, there is reason to feel that way because he mentioned that the plane must have been fully uh, occupied. We're told that there were 158 passengers and a crew of uh, nine or ten aboard that plane, so that's just for openers, the number of people killed. And again, we've had eyewitnesses telling us that people were falling from the upper floors, were jumping out the upper floors in, in, a, in, a, in apparent uh, panic. So it is, by any stretch of the imagination, a terrible, terrible tragedy. We're also told that an, an organization that calls itself the Democratic Front for the Liberation of Palestine is claiming responsibility. Now, do you wonder if they have any, any connection to Osama bin Laden? I've heard that they don't. I don't know. I don't I've know never if heard of that confirmed. outfit before. Have right. you, have you I've never heard of that outfit before either, but I, I wonder the if they have any front for it. Yes. Right. No, the name is familiar. I have heard the yep. name mentioned yep. before. But I believe they don't have any connection to Osama, to Osama bin Laden. Laden. But you know what? This is all unconfirmed yes. right now. I think what goes through your mind is how did this slip past the FBI? How did this slip past the FBI with all these different attacks in two different states? As you can imagine, Ralph, as you can imagine, it was a pretty frenzied scene out here just a few moments ago. I'd say about 20 minutes ago. We're not sure exactly what it was. We have not confirmed it, but something either exploded or fell off the side of the one building that was attacked and caused a massive plume of smoke. As we turn left, you can see there's a trucks go by that they are spitting off smoke. These were the emergency trucks and ambulances that were near the building at the time that that had happened. At that point, it wasn't so much of a frenzied scenario because people were walking away from the building. This entire region has been cordoned off, and people who are working in nearby buildings were told to leave and evacuate the area for obvious reasons for safety concerns. When that second plume of smoke came up from the ground area, people started running, people were covered in soot, there were people with blood on their shirts, uh, rips in their shirts, and at this point, looking up at the top of the building, at a rate of about one every five minutes, you see people that are jumping from the top of the building. It is an absolutely harrowing scene, harrowing scene at this point. Uh, police officials told us to evacuate the area that we were in. We moved about two blocks further, but the scene is very, very similar. Plumes of smoke all around the area and people not exactly sure what's going on. All the telephone lines are jammed up as people are trying to communicate, not just police to other people, but folks who saw what happened trying to communicate uh, loved ones and let them know that they're safe. So it's a, a very hectic situation at this point. As we gather more information and we're sure we're settled where we're supposed to stop, we'll get back to you because at this point, police are still not sure where we should be. And as you can see a lot of police activity they're trying to move the media to a safe area so we can do proper reporting and let everybody know exactly what's going on for now back to you Walter have they given you any indication I'm sorry he can't hear me all right uh, we just we simply do not know who has been hurt and what casualties might have occurred which is the yeah. information that we are uh, I want you to take a look at what's happening yeah. right now oh. that is a live picture that's, world that's a live picture too that's World Trade Center 2 has just collapsed that's the second oh my power to collapse we are now looking at oh my goodness, the collapse look at the of the second of the World oh my Trade Towers, or World Trade Center Towers. Um, again, this is Both something that we down. never dreamed we would witness in our lifetime. Oh my Let us God. tell you that to come I into the city I hope they evacuated right now, everybody out of that be area because... The bridges, the tunnels shut down, subway lines, trains pretty much closed. <laughs> Um, the New York Stock Exchange. No, just a you moment ago, the entire top of the building collapsed. You can see a massive plume of smoke. People are running away from the area. There are firefighters and there are police trying to evacuate the area as quickly as possible. People who are near the area are in an absolute frenzied situation. The entire top of the building just collapsed. You can see the plume of smoke is coming in our direction. Let's get out of here, Ralph. We're going to leave because the smoke is coming right at us. Obviously, this is a devastating They're moment gone. in Look our history. They're gone. The World Trade Center is, is no more. A world forever erased from our memory. No, I think it will always be in our memory, that's for sure, but definitely erased from our skies. I, this is just unbelievable. A live picture of some... Uh, Chapter 5 showing the collapse of the World Trade Center. Mm. What do we do now? Mr. Jaffe, right? but what, what do we do now? I mean, you said I shouldn't be angry, and maybe I shouldn't, but I am very, very well, angry by this, and we shouldn't let it shut us down. No. But this 
is a tremendous impact on our lives. Where do we go from here? What should we do? How do we respond? I think we take a very deliberate course of action, which may take a week, a month, a year, where we start to put ourselves on track to understand that we are the target in a war and we have to fight it, which means we have to make sacrifices to protect ourselves while we go on. And we have to dedicate some resources that we haven't so that this type of thing doesn't. This picture is surreal. It almost looks like we're frozen in time. This is what we have dreaded forever. We went through 40 years after the war with, with our not having any dom real domestic violence. And now it's caught us. And now we have to put ourselves Dick in Oliver, a position. Dick Oliver, right? And I, I understand, Mr. Jaffe, that, that this, this tragedy has not ended yet because the Capitol Police in Washington are now reporting that a plane has been hijacked and they fear it is heading toward the Capitol building in Washington, which, as we have reported, is, has been evacuated, but uh, yet another clear symbol of our, our country and our government and our way of life. You also have to wonder all the um, police personnel and fire department who were called to Lower Manhattan to help the people in the Trade Center. Let's hope they're okay now, too, with this collapse of the tower. Yes, indeed. There were, I'm sure, plenty of rescue workers who were in and around that building. And uh, with that collapse, I'm sure... What about the command center? More the command center. The in command the center is, uh, I think, in Tower 5 of, yes. the, world, of the World Trade Center. And uh, there's no way of telling whether that's intact. Uh, one would suspect that looking at that picture there, that live picture, mm. that the command center is not in very good shape either. And you have to wonder just how far this reached. I mean, you're talking about Wall Street is nearby, mm -hmm. you know, a place that the world looks to. The gentleman who said that the Marriott didn't the appear hotel. to be the there. Sister, yeah. Well, he had his vantage point was around by the, the, the financial mm -hmm. center there, yeah. which is uh, ironically built on the. Uh, um, they're talking to me in my ear. All right, this is, uh, we're, uh, we have tape, I understand, a few minutes ago. This is the collapse as viewed from the ground. just a few moments ago uh, you heard uh, the people reacting in, in terror and, and horror as the World Trade Center simply collapsed and apparently it is not over again to repeat we have a report from the Capitol Police that uh, another plane has been hijacked and they are afraid that that plane is heading for the Capitol building which along with uh, any other uh, important building in Washington has been evacuated and just to, uh, to tell you, um, if you are outside the island of Manhattan, don't try to come in today. There's no way you can get in, and uh, people are uh, streaming out as quickly as possible. Well, I believe mm -hmm. bridges and tunnels have all been closed, and uh, certainly any subway station that mm -hmm. goes through the World Trade Center. Does that mean, I, as well, I would guess that anybody who is in Manhattan now. We'll be walking, yeah. uh, if they can. Yeah, Dick Oliver get out. reported uh, from near the Brooklyn Bridge before that, uh, mm. that people were streaming across the bridge toward Brooklyn, but nobody coming back in. I'm surprised that the Brooklyn Bridge has not been closed. I think... Uh, well, maybe to uh, pedestrians, mm, yeah. you know. I'm sure that they closed the, the Midtown Tunnel, mm. and, they, and they closed uh, the other bridges across uh, the East River, and of course the, uh, the Hudson River crossings as well. And uh, again, to repeat, there, there is no uh, there is no air, there is no plane taking off in America today mm. as, as a consequence yeah. of this uh, unbelievable terrorist act. Mm. Uh, Mario Bosquez has gone to uh, Beth Israel Hospital downtown. Mario, are you there? All right, uh, Mario, uh, uh, at uh, 
Beth Israel Hospital downtown, where some of the uh, victims of this terrible tragedy are being taken. Uh, you would imagine that, um, my goodness, the carnage mm -hmm. must be unbelievable. Uh, deaths may number in the thousands. Uh, if, if, I mean, the World Trade Center is the largest office building in this city, simply collapsed. You, you fear to, mm. to even make uh, an attempt at uh, I mean, defining the, 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 the enormity of this tragedy. I mean, not only the people in the tower, the people on the ground now you have to be concerned about. Sure, as you mentioned before, uh, rescue workers there, when the building collapsed some time after the initial crash. And I know my husband, who was like a few blocks away from there, was told around 9.15 to evacuate. I hope he got the heck out of there and came okay. home. Okay. Um, Rosanna, your colleague uh, in the evening, John Rowland, is down in the newsroom right now talking about uh, what's happening in Washington. John? Uh, yes, uh, good afternoon, Jim. Trying to drink all of this in as, uh, as you are. The uh, enormity of, uh, of this, of course, is, uh, is beyond anybody in this business in this entire city. We've never in our lives seen anything even remotely approaching this. The latest information we have out of Washington from the State Department is that that is being evacuated, the White House being evacuated. The Pentagon, of, of course, has already been attacked, as, you, as you've already been reporting. And there is word now that there is... That was George W. Bush about an hour ago speaking from Longboat Key, Florida. He is en route to Washington, D.C. We're looking at some pictures on the ground, or we were, of apparently some of the victims. Yes, he is on the ground. Quite extraordinary. This, these are the emergency workers who are coming back. It was just about 10 minutes ago that we described to you the possibility of that North Tower collapsing. About five minutes after we went off the air, it did collapse. Once again, we have no idea at this point the loss of life. I can only tell you there were hundreds of emergency workers down there, about five or six blocks. It took probably about, I would say, no more than 50 or 60 seconds for that dust cloud, dust and smoke, to literally make it the five or six blocks up here and begin to envelop us, at which point we started to move out of the way. There were literally dozens and dozens of firemen who were trying to run past us. In fact, our cameraman even put one of the captains in his car and drove him down to a command post. The people you see here are pretty much all emergency workers. Many of them that I have seen in the last two to three minutes, quite frankly, are coming out of here. And remember this, these are professionals. They're coming out of there looking literally stunned in shock, many of them, struggling for breath, obviously in serious distress. Breathing problems are the biggest problem for those who manage to make it safely out of that area down below us. You can't see much more than a block south of me right now. And the World Trade Center probably stands about 10 blocks south of where I am at this moment. And as you can see now, the dust is beginning to pick up here. It really depends on which way the wind blows as to whether or not we get heavy dust or not. But at this point, I can tell you that in the first few minutes, emergency workers were trying just basically to get out of there, to survive. You could see that written in their faces. The situation was so desperate, they just wanted to get out of there. Now, many of them are beginning to regroup. A couple of them asked me where their commander might be. They're trying to get together and go back in there and try to take care of the people who obviously are in serious trouble. There's no other way to describe it. The language here, uh, at times, if I slip into language which seems a little melodramatic, uh, forgive me, but this is uh, a circumstance which uh, uh, is very, very difficult to describe in many ways without sounding melodramatic. Certainly in more than 20 years of, of covering horrific events, this is something that I've never seen before. Um, as we say, the emergency workers now beginning to try to gather themselves. Over there you can see a police emergency service unit. Uh, they are trying basically now to reestablish some kind of a safe perimeter. And many of the emergency workers basically just happy to be alive. Certainly that picture tells it all. Many of them just happy to be alive at this point, uh, having survived what is an extraordinary event, the collapse of two towers. As we said earlier in our report, 110 stories each. Uh, I will tell you that what fell, what I saw fall, had to be at least 40, 50 stories of that building at first. The skeleton was left at about, I would say, the 50 or 60th floor after the shell, after the uh, structure of the building fell down. The, uh, the skeleton, the steel skeleton, was literally sheaved off, and it took probably about another 30 seconds before the skeleton collapsed into the street. That was the last we saw of the World Trade Center. 
uh, and that was maybe 10 minutes ago uh, when those uh, that final skeleton, the metal skeleton, steel skeleton, collapsed into the street. That was but NBC's Pat Dawson again. He's standing about 10 blocks from where the World Trade Center towers used to stand. You're looking at the collapse of one of those towers right now. We now have an AP News alert out of Pittsburgh. Officials at Somerset County Airport are confirming the crash of a large plane just north of the airport. That's about 80 miles southeast of Pittsburgh. Again, officials at Somerset County Airport confirmed the crash of a large plane north of that airport, which is located about 80 miles to the southeast of the city of Pittsburgh. We do not know whether that crash of that plane is related to what has become an obvious terrorist attack, both here in New York City and in Washington, D.C. at the Pentagon. Uh, Matt, we just got a late word that uh, State Department security officials are denying those reports of a car bomb at the State Department. Betsy Stewart is at the C Street entrance and also says there's no sign of a car bomb. Betsy Stewart is one of our producers who's very familiar with the uh, State Department. The building has been evacuated. Top officials are still believed to be in the operations center, however. Those are highly secured areas in terms of penetration physically and otherwise. Colin Powell, as Andrea reported earlier, was headed for Lima, Peru, but he's done a U-turn and he's coming back. The president is on his way back. He'll have a National Security Council meeting. We think probably at around 1130 or perhaps around noon, that is likely to take place either at Andrews Air Force Base or in some more secure location. The White House has been evacuated, especially with this report of another plane going down, this time in the Pittsburgh area. There were planes in the air when the order went out that there would be no more takeoffs. So we don't know how much more damage uh, these terrorists had in mind. Let's go to Bob Hager, who is, of course, NBC's uh, aviation expert. Bob, what kind of information are you getting from your sources? Uh, not a lot, Katie, from the FAA. For instance, they are not talking about uh, any possible hijacks. And normally, they can tell when there's a hijack in progress because the, uh, the pilot, uh, the original pilot of the plane, has various buttons that he can push that set off a code and, and tell them that there were hijacks. But maybe as a matter of security, they're not saying anything about that. They did stop uh, all takeoffs in the U.S. at 9 25 this morning and then for pilots that were in the air the question came up what to do about them and they were given some discretion to continue on to their destination so long as it was not the New York or Washington area or divert to an airport if that's what they wanted to do. Uh, I personally, I saw the blast at the Pentagon, not the blast take place, but moments after it, I'd been at National Airport trying to get up to New York, and you could see that smoke billowing out of the Pentagon. I can give you a little description of what it's like on the streets of Washington, because it was quite crowded trying to work my way back here to NBC. Uh, they have now given uh, not only the White House and those key buildings like the U.S. Capitol, but uh, at this point, they've given all federal employees the word to leave their offices and get home. Right. So there are traffic jams in Washington. Washington. Okay, we, we, Bob, I'm sure you're going to get more information for us momentarily, but first we want to go to Jim Miklaszewski at the Pentagon, who has some more information. Mick? Katie, they're still clearing people away from the Pentagon. Uh, still, security forces believe that there may be an, another incoming plane headed in, in the Washington region. But there was a very telling, dramatic moment just a second ago when a U.S. Air Force F-16 flew very low level, did a wide, sweeping turn around the Pentagon, and back over the over Washington and as one Air Force officer standing near me said my god they're now flying air cover over Washington uh, a very dramatic moment a milestone in what Tom has already described as a as a declaration of war uh, terrorist war against the US Can let's go back and show you the pictures of lower Manhattan where the situation only gets worse not better that is the financial district of the world it's also a residential area and a great commercial area both twin trade tower buildings now have collapsed onto the ground. There is an untold loss of life. The ripple effect goes on with all the smoke and dust that is spread out across that very densely populated area. It goes down below ground as well as uh, in the high-rise buildings there. There are many residential structures in that area as well. Some heroic rescue workers were down there trying to get people out of the building when first the first building came down and then the second building did as well. Without any sound and looking at this, there is a kind of a surreal quality. But that is the epicenter of a great, great national tragedy and a great loss of life. No question about it this morning. We're talking about people who were hurt, perhaps killed in this blast. Many of them have been brought to area hospitals, including St. Vincent's Hospital. Bob Bazell is there. Bob, what's the latest? 
Well, Katie, ambulances continue to stream in. Uh, several New York City streets have been closed. Major avenues have been closed off so that ambulances can continue to come in. Uh, in addition, the New York City subway system has now been closed down, and several buildings that were not involved in the World Trade Center area have been shut down and people have been told to go home, but a lot of them are just wandering aimlessly on the street, many people openly weeping and hugging each other. This is clearly uh, is a time that, as Tom described, is very close to the beginning of a war, And uh, the, but the casualties do keep coming in, burns, smoke inhalation, very severe, and again, uh, all the medical people that I've talked to say this is just the tip of the iceberg. We expect casualties to be coming in all through the night and way into tomorrow and beyond. Bob, if you could just stand by for a moment because we have this report from AP that I'm just simply going to read. A large plane crashed Tuesday morning just north of the Somerset County Airport, about 80 miles southeast of Pittsburgh. Airport officials said the plane, believed to be a Boeing 767, crashed around 10 a.m., about eight miles east of Jennerstown. According to County 911 dispatchers, WPXI-TV reported, the crash came the same morning the terrorists crashed two planes into the World Trade Center in New York City and the twin 110-story towers collapsed. Explosions also rocked the Pentagon and the State Department, although that was refuted moments ago, and spread fear across the nation. There was no other immediate details on the Pennsylvania crash, and it was not clear whether the crash was related to the others. Again, that was a report, a bulletin, that was just issued by the Associated Press. You know what is so stunning about all of this, Matt and Katie, is that there has been no, no indication whatsoever that this very carefully coordinated massive attack was going to occur. There's been a complete intelligence failure here. Uh, and there will be, obviously, down the road, a price to pay for that. Well, that's actually not all that surprising, Tom, because we've often talked in the past following every terrorist event about how vulnerable the United States is, and many terrorist experts say how unprepared they are. And the question, of course, is can you ever prepare for an attack like this? Well, the, the, that's true, but we also have people out there who are enlisting posts, and we've penetrated these kinds of organizations. But to have this kind of an attack, this sophisticated, this efficient, striking at the heart of the nation's capital, striking at the heart of New York City, now and if, if this is true that this plane went down as a result of this attack, we don't know whether it's the end of it. Right. This is a massively well-coordinated attack of some kind that is nothing short but a, of a declaration of war on this and country. Terrorist experts are now saying, and intelligence experts are now saying, that there are a very short or a very few number of terrorist groups that are capable of this kind of planning and, and a couple of names come to mind and I'm not going to throw them out now because we certainly don't have any reports. Before I go to Jamie Gangell, I just want to say that some of the descriptions coming from eyewitnesses in lower Manhattan of, of these explosions occurring are chilling. One man talked about getting off a PATH train, that's a subway train here in lower Manhattan and looking up at the building after the first explosion and seeing people jump out of the windows. We have no idea how high up, but hearing people on the ground scream each time another person jumped out of a window attempting to get to safety. And then when the second explosion occurred, he felt the heat of the explosion on the back of his neck. Jamie Gangell is our national correspondent. She's joining us now on the phone. Jamie? Matt, you know, speaking of those intelligence officials that you were just mentioning, now finally we can no longer reach on the phone anyone at the CIA. Apparently the CIA has been evacuated. We know the National Security Agency, which is the electronic eavesdropping agency, which is south of Baltimore near Fort Meade, Maryland, that they have been shut down. What we're hearing from both places is that all non-essential personnel have been told to leave. Uh, and I can only imagine that probably they are trying to move some of their operations out 